Welcome back to Ideas at Work and Beyond. We have the lovely Helena Aprontis here. Hello. Who is a candidate for mayor of Danbury, Connecticut. And uh, we're going to be asking some questions and talking today about overdevelopment. Yes. And uh, some concerns along those lines. A little housekeeping. Next week, we're going to be talking about taxes and downtown Danbury. And also, we'd like to thank uh, the two candidates for first selectmen. Uh, well, the, the existing first selectman, Rudy Marconi, and uh, his uh, challenger, the Republican-endorsed candidate, Scott Mason, in Ridgefield. And we appreciate very much Mac Reed, the editor of the Ridgefield Press, for leading that discussion regarding issues facing the town of Ridgefield. And that was last week. Um, but uh, the remainder of the show will uh, be dedicated to issues facing uh, the upcoming mayoral race. Yes. And let me just say... Um, there is an open invitation for Mark Bowden to join us in these discussions. Um, we've uh, talked with uh, some folks from uh, Mark's office, and he's expressed some concern about coming on this show. Um, and uh, I hope that he rethinks that. I hope he comes. Uh, you've been here, right? Yes, I have. Have you been ill-treated? Have you been no. disrespected? Have you been, you know, uh, uh, somehow... Um, uh, taken advantage of or asked questions that you're not prepared to answer? No, no, I have not. All right, well, the show's early. It could happen, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate very much you coming in, and I, uh, I'd love if Mark Bowden would, was to join us. But uh, there's what, 28 days till election, something like that? Yes, pretty much, yes. Okay, so we're down to the home stretch. Before we get to these issues and your prepared remarks. <laughs> My prepared remarks. <laughs> how are you feeling? How's it going? Are you, was this the biggest mistake you ever made running for public <laughs> office, or are you enjoying the process? No, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I, since I've been involved in it for quite a few years, I actually enjoy it. Okay. And I, I think I can make a big difference in the city. Okay. What's the reaction you're getting from people? Uh, very positive. Um, going, walking a lot uh, door to door, mm -hmm. and the people are very, very receptive, very nice. They, some people want to know exactly what's going on and my opinion of certain situations. And after talking to them, they feel very comfortable with me. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, you have some uh, some things you want to talk about about overdevelopment. Would you like to? Um, and by the way, phone lines are open at seven nine two. 4101 792 4101. Don't hesitate to pick up your phone and call. This is your opportunity. We have a candidate for the mayor of Danbury right here. <laughs> so well, um, some of the issues that are very, uh, I would say the number one issue with most residents that I've talked to is overdevelopment in Danbury. Um, Danbury is getting to a point where we're so saturated. Um, with different types of development that you really can't move around. It's impacting the traffic, it's impacting our infrastructure, and it is a major concern. It's a major concern for myself, too, because there's so many condos going up and so, so many multifamily homes going up on the west side mm -hmm. that my concern is how is it going to impact our schools when we're approximately 112% already in our high school mm -hmm. and our um, schools are really bleeding at the seams and we don't have room for the, the students. So, I mean, overdevelopment impacts the entire city. And um, to me, smart growth is something that's, that's critical. You really have to think about where you're putting things and where you're not putting things. You have to designate certain pieces of land for what they were approved for. Um, before I left the Common Council, which was a remark that was made yesterday, a plan of development was presented. Now, when you say yesterday, you're referring to the debate that you and the mayor had? Yes, okay. um, the debate. He made a comment that uh, there was no plan of development ever proposed since 1980. I'm not sure what the year was that he used, but that, in fact, was not the case because um, right before I left uh, the Common Council, Dennis Alpern, who is still the planning director, presented um, a plan of development to the council. Um, before I had left the council and one of my major concerns and one of the questions I did ask him at that time um, when I was still a common council member was if he had communicated with the surrounding towns because my concern was how they were going to develop and how they were going to impact our traffic mm. uh, and our flow of traffic within the community and um, his response to me was no, he hadn't contacted one, but I could see New Fairfield growing. I live off of 37, mm -hmm. and the more development that goes up in Danbury, 
it's terrible if you leave after a certain hour to get on the roadway, mm -hmm. to travel to the center of town, or to even get on the highway. And it's the same thing. You have New Fairfield. New Fairfield comes into Danbury. Sherman feeds into Danbury yeah. through um, through Clapper Ridge, and it's all impacting us tremendously. And it, it is a serious situation. Ridgefield, Bethel, they all feed into Danbury. If I can be the devil's advocate here. <clears throat> Yes, traffic is a problem. Mm -hmm. Why is that the fault of the existing mayor, and why should people vote for you, and what are you going to do about it? Because if I'm looking into a crystal ball, mm -hmm. and you're voted in office, I would imagine four years from now, traffic is, is going to be a problem. I would imagine four years ago, traffic was a problem. As a matter of fact, they're just now finishing uh, the the expansion of Route 7, um, and uh, that was an issue. Uh, tremendous issue. In the 70s, yes. in the 80s. Tremendous. So oh. if I'm the devil's advocate here, I'm saying, well, here's a candidate for mayor of Danbury. Right. Everyone's frustrated by traffic. Right. So they're sitting in traffic, and she's saying, hey, we got all this traffic because of this guy in office. Vote for me, and I'll make well, it all go away. I'll tell you, uh, approximately 20 years ago when Dyer was the mayor of the city of Danbury, uh -huh. he did a comprehensive traffic study within the, within the city. Okay. And that's when they corrected some of the traffic flow and it was a major impact in Danbury. When they so it made, improved it? Oh yes, okay. tremendously. And nothing has been done since then um, with with uh, respect to this, and it needs to be done again. Um, that's when they made Baumforth Avenue one way, Maple Avenue another way, and we built Garamella Boulevard. Right, okay. So we got rid of a lot of the little roads that were in between that were Im impeding, basically, okay. um, the traffic. And the flow of traffic was amazing. It just changed the flow tremendously yeah. on that road. And we need to do something like that again. We really need to sit down and do a major traffic study and okay. see what we can do to improve the flow. Because it's it is very difficult. Anyone that travels in Danbury, I don't like to travel in Danbury at 5 o'clock when you get out of work or when you're going into work at 8 o'clock in the morning. I could be in traffic leaving my house from 8 in the morning till and for about half an hour getting to the light on the corner of North Street yeah. at times wow. because the traffic is so backed up into Ridgefield. Yeah. Not Ridgefield, no Fairfield, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I it's, mean, backed, it's backed up into Ridgefield, too. Yes. I, I attend uh, Walnut Hill Community Church and there's a there's a men's Bible study on Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. and driving up there at seven in the morning, the traffic is already building, heading into right. Route Seven. I right. mean, it, it's it's early and yeah. it's already building. So, so I mean, we, it's something that we have to do because as these homes on the west side, there's approximately 2,142 multifamily homes that are going up there, mm -hmm. and you figure each home has at least two cars, and if they have a child, that's an additional car. Yeah. So you're already impacting our, our roadway. So your point is, if I'm elected, I'm not going to magically make all these cars no, go away. of course not. But you're saying that there could be better um, planning, planning. long-term traffic planning. It's been done in the past. Yes, it, it has. It was marked improvement. It's been neglected, yes. and, and that's an area yes. of concern. And, okay. and also, um, traffic isn't improved by putting a speed bump on the road or putting up signs that tell you how many miles you're going in an hour because people, a lot of people don't pay attention to that. Okay. Um, and putting up traffic lights. Sometimes that causes more road rage than anything else, especially mm -hmm. if the street lights are not synchronized. And it, it impedes traffic. So the street lights or the red lights or the traffic the lights? The traffic lights are okay. not synchronized. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And so that's not the remedy um, to help the flow of traffic. Okay. Speed bumps, there was one that was put on Virginia Avenue and the residents were furious. So the speed bump had to be taken out. Okay. <laughs> right. so. um, let me ask a, a question regarding overdevelopment because I see it as sort of a two edged sword. Mm -hmm. um, the, there, there's always a, a cry for increased corporate tax base in, in, in various towns. I, I know that's the case in Ridgefield. But where do you draw the line between increasing your corporate tax base, which takes the pressure off the individual homeowner that have seen their taxes go up, the individual uh, owner of a small apartment building that see their taxes go up, that they then have to increase rents. Correct. Um, how do you balance the desire for limiting growth and yet at the same time recognizing that growth 
bespeaks a healthy, expanding economy that helps generate tax revenues that, that keep the pressure off existing home and real estate owners? Well, well one important thing is um, your zoning. You, you don't want to change zoning that's light industrial or heavy industrial or commercial to okay. residential. That's, that's critical. You have okay. to leave your light industrial and your heavy industrial and your commercial property the way it is so that you are not adding more homes in that section and you bring in the corporations mm -hmm. you do the same thing that we did while I was on the council uh, we brought in GE Capital mm -hmm. perfect example GE Capital came into Danbury they brought in 200 new jobs mm -hmm. that was critical and we gave them a seven-year tax deferral mm -hmm. the seven-year tax deferral was normally only given to corporations coming in, bringing in jobs, bringing individuals that are going to spend money right. within our community. We did the same thing with Cardis, which was formerly Ascendant Mobility, right. um, to bring in jobs, bring in um, more revenue for, for the city. Um, Belimo, I wasn't on the council at the time, but it was done for Belimo mm -hmm. also. Um, Mankind, pharmaceutical company, mm -hmm. um, they came in, they wanted to come into Danbury, um, they had talked to the previous mayor, Jean Eriquez. Mm -hmm. um, they came to an agreement that they would take over the Davison Get facility, that was the All location right, right. that they wanted, mm -hmm. and they had promised to expand and to bring several more jobs mm -hmm. at a later date, which is something that they are doing at this point, okay. um, which is wonderful for the economy. Right. Um, so, so, but hasn't Mayor Bowden had actually a very good record at attracting businesses to town and expanding the, the corporate tax base? I'm not sure which businesses he's attracted into town. So you're saying all these ones you've listed are pre-Mayor Bowden. Yes. Once he became mayor, no new businesses. Had, had I'm come sure in. that some businesses have come in, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure what they are. Mm -hmm. um, Energy Research, which is the fuel cell uh, business, was already here previously. Okay. Uh, Mankind was already here. Senate Mobility was here. Uh, Belimo was I here. Know, I know you're <laughs> in a business of a political campaign, and you're not in the business of touting what Mayor Bowden no. has done. But I think. He, Generally speaking, he, he's, he's pretty well liked by the business community. He has made Danbury a business-friendly environment to work in, and I know you won't necessarily give him some credit for that, but, but I, 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 my understanding is that's been his track record. It's a shame he's not here because he could be more specific sure, about yes. his record. Yes, he could. Um, but I think that, uh, that, that Danbury's economy has been one that's been very welcoming to job generating uh, industries. Well, it's it's very important it to do to that. Be. It has to be because yeah. otherwise the tax base for the residents would even increase more and it would be very disastrous. The one thing that's happened though during his um, tenure as mayor is the um, water and sewer rates have increased tremendously mm -hmm. and that impacts businesses especially. Yeah. I know I'm a small business owner. I yeah. know what the increase has been um, in the last four years since I've been open, uh -huh. my sewer and water rate increased almost four times as to what it was. Huh. And that hurts me tremendously. Yeah. So the property tax rate has increased every year, right. but it's been a little bit more stable. But what came from behind was the sewer and water rates, yeah. which has impacted condominiums. People that live in condominiums, they've seen it tremendously. Talking to residents within the community, yeah. that's an issue that they've been talking about. And then a lot of fees, because I'm a small business owner now, I have a fee that I have to pay for to have my alarm system, and I have to notify yeah. um, the city about the get, alarm system. Do you system. get fined for false alarms? If yes, they go which is, you need to get fined for a false okay. alarm, no matter who that is. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very important important because if the police are constantly going down, I understand. I understand. then a, they're not a, doing their jobs on the street. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Now you had some uh, prepared remarks that you wanted to talk about? No, it's, it's pretty much what I'm saying. Okay, okay. I have a question because I was, I was reading through the paper and, um, and you know, it talked about your uh, debate uh, with the mayor and, um, you know, it seemed like immigration was an issue. And there's a, there's a letter. I'd like to read it, if, sure. I, if I could. This That's is a letter. Fine. It's found in the Danbury News Times. And it's Bowden, stand, uh, Bowden stands up for illegal immigration. Hats off to the Hat City Mayor! Exclamation point. Um, as a former Danbury resident, my, my wife and I, I want to tell the residents of Danbury how lucky you are to have a mayor like Mark Bowden. Someone who's not scared to do his job to stand up to the liberal left and the liberal media in regards to legal immigration. 
exclamation point. The key word here is illegal. If more of our politicians had the courage of Danbury Mayor Bowden, we would not have the problems we currently have with illegal immigration in the United States. Even though my wife and I have gone on, have gone from Danbury, or have been gone from Danbury for quite some time, we still call Danbury home and just want Mayor Bowden to know how proud we are of him for standing up and not backing down to the liberal left. This is the letter writer. Um, I only wish we had more politicians like him. The residents of Danbury should be proud of their mayor and support him all the way. This is Mary and Maureen Paust, P-A-U-S-T. Mm -hmm. Is that the type of sentiment that, that Mayor Bowden is getting regarding this illegal immigration issue? Is it, would, would you concur with what they're talking about? Um, where is your position okay. as, as regards to Mayor Bowden on this? Okay. What seems to be very hot topic. Well, it is to a certain extent, but as you're walking around talking to people, mm -hmm. that is not their primary concern, actually, in Danbury. Okay. What bothers me is we have people in our federal government, right. okay? We have our congressmen, we have our senators, and they are not doing anything to remedy, remedy this problem. It is a serious problem. Yeah. But when you deport five people, 20 more people are coming in through the borders. Right. You have not solved absolutely anything. And the first thing that has to be done, and our federal government has to do this, is they have to start patrolling those borders and really start paying attention to what's going on and pass immigration reform. This is crazy. Uh -huh. We cannot continue this way. They have to make some decisions. I don't understand why they don't make those decisions. They were elected. They were put in those positions so that they had a responsibility to the people of the United States. I came to the United States with my family. I did come here legally. Mm -hmm. um, I was four years old. And at the age of 14, I became a U.S. citizen. And it was one of the proudest days of my life. Mm -hmm. I was able to educate my parents, to teach them the questions and answers. They had to take that test in English. Mm -hmm. There was no opportunity to take it in other, any other language. And they learned, and they learned how to speak English. It's it's imperative for everyone to speak English yeah, yeah. Um, because it, without it, I'm not saying that you have to be a scholar or a doctor or anything of that nature, mm -hmm. but you have to learn enough to get by because if you don't learn, you will not survive. It, and it's the same thing if I traveled anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. I would have to learn how to speak that language in order to function properly yeah. um, in those countries. But the federal government has not done their job. They have to do what is responsible because what's happening is Mayor Bowden is trying to do things within the community, but the problem is you can't pass any ordinance. As you pass an ordinance, it's going to be taken to a higher court, yeah. and it's going to be thrown out. We've seen that happening yeah. in all different towns. There's a town in Pennsylvania that Hazleton, had Hazleton, Hazleton, that Pennsylvania. Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Yes. Then just recently, there was another town in New Jersey. Right. I want to say like Riverview, Riverside, yeah, I'm not something sure. like that. And then there was a, there was a town of Mamaroneck. Right. Mamaroneck in New York. Well, Mamaroneck, they, and then the, uh, they passed a law, but there was a town in New York that actually the, the, um, the uh, immigrants took them to court and they actually won the case. Yeah. You have to be very careful because how you handle this. Being in the legal field, I've mm -hmm. been a paralegal for many years, you, you see what happens and it's very frustrating mm -hmm. because you're, you're attempting to do something, but it's not a valid thing that you're doing because it's going to be overturned. And mm -hmm. in the process, you're spending a lot of legal fees attempting to defend what you've passed that you can't pass. Yeah, I actually think Momernik, the number I remember was $2 million in legal expenses after they passed an ordinance. And I think the ordinance just had something to do with limiting where day laborers can be picked Correct. up or, or limiting their access to it. That was it. They weren't, you know trying to introduce a constitutional amendment, $2 million in legal fees, it's, it's deemed unconstitutional, and right. they've well, done nothing except that, spend a lot of the taxpayers' money on legal expenses. Correct. And that's where my concern is, because you're, you're, you're attempting to pass a law. That law is going to get passed, mm -hmm. and then it's going to be opposed, just like the situation we have now um, where the lawsuit was filed against Danbury and yeah, the mayor the and the Danbury police chief, 11? the Danbury 11. Are they and picking backing off that situation down in Louisiana? Everyone has a number now associated with it. <laughs> I have no idea. That I don't the know. Danbury 11. Okay. Well, I, see, I don't know might, why they came up with on. that. You never know, but okay. <laughs> but the, the situation is you are spending a tremendous, tremendous money, amount of money. Mm -hmm. It's the taxpayer dollars. Yeah 
to all of a sudden have to go into court and to lose your case because the federal law supersedes yeah. our local law. Mm -hmm. And so when you're doing something, you have to consciously think about what you're doing and, and doing it and do it in the proper way. You have to get together with all the other community leaders, mm -hmm. with Bethel, with New Fairfield, with Ridgefield. Everyone has to get together mm -hmm. and start putting pressure on the people that we've elected, along with the residents. Mm -hmm. of the cities and the towns to make a difference. If they don't do that, they're not going to do anything up in Congress because mm -hmm. it's almost like they're afraid to do anything. But whether you like it or you don't like it, you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You have to do something because it's, it's affecting everywhere in the United States. You know, I did, uh, I like history. I like reading history. I like he reading historical biographies. And really, um, I think I got this quote right. That, they said that the, the past is really the present rolled out for our understanding, and the present is really the past rolled up for action. And the idea is that what we're experiencing right now with this primarily Hispanic wave of immigrants is, is not anything new. Correct. Um, I, looked at, I looked up uh, the Know Nothing Party, and this is going back to the early 1800s and in the early 1800s as immigrants continued to flow into the United States a number of American citizens grew increasingly alarmed waves of Germans can you imagine <laughs> that's all we need is more Heisers waves of Germans <laughs> who mostly spoke in their native tongue and the Irish yes the Irish my real name is Martin Francis Carroll don't you know <laughs> and the Irish whose thick brogues were difficult to understand were two groups who inspired the greatest opposition. The clannish Irish, who were Catholic, were particularly feared and despised, many of the Protestants felt. And it, it, it goes on, and this is in the 1800s. I, and, and, and there's another, the, the nativists. Um, same thing. You know, anti, but wave after wave of immigrants have come to this country, and one way or the other, they assimilate. And yes. I think I think with the person who wrote that letter and are very supportive of what Mary Bowden is doing, is there's a cry for the rule of law. Yes. We need to have some sort of structure here. And then on the other side there's a cry of, hey, you know, we're all immigrants here. Who are you to say we can't have it? True. What I would advocate, and hopefully you would too, is there needs to be some middle ground. There needs to be some comprehensive immigration where the, the folks that come and they're needed. They're needed by industry. They're needed by, um, and it's not just semi-skilled labor, but skilled labor. They're True. needed. Can they can be accommodated and more easily assimilated? Yes, I mean. Assimilation is critical. When my parents came here, mm -hmm. my dad was a laborer. My mom worked in a factory. By the way, it was right. You came here legally, right? There yes, was... I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, right. I did. I came here with a green card. <laughs> I mean, I'm not with the federal, uh, for, you know, any agencies, but uh, that was a question that's been raised. Go ahead. Um, I've actually seen it uh, comment every once in a while. Maybe she's not legal, and I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. But um, it, it, it is critical. We have to do something. Something has to be done. But I think by going on national TV mm -hmm. and saying that we are in a disastrous manner is not the remedy because it impacts our town. Yeah. Why would people want to move to Danbury if we have such a bad situation? Yeah. And it's, it's disastrous here. Yeah. So. You know, you, you just have to balance it properly, and I just think that's not the way to handle it. I think the way to handle it is starting to go after the federal government. They have to do their job. If they want it done, they have to fund it. If you don't fund it, they can't do it. And yes, we have our police officers. Our police officers have so much work to do within the community. Walking around, there's parts of Danbury, and the residents have told me that have been neglected. Mm -hmm. and. It's something that you have to look into. They need to be able to do their job. We'll leave it at that. Okay. I'm sure the, de the debate will go on. Um, I, I wasn't able to attend your debate, but I read about it in the paper. It seemed <laughs> like it was a very lively discussion. It was good. It and, was very good. Uh, as we started the show with, uh, this studio and uh, these cameras are open to Mayor Bowden, and I hope yes. he joins us. He is very busy. 
And politically speaking, uh, he seems to be in a strong position, and there is the argument that, you know, he has other things he needs to do, which I respect. I'm, I'm also very busy. you got to remember, I'm That's a paralegal, right. I own a restaurant, and I'm campaigning. Legal. But uh, we, we'd love to have uh, both uh, candidates here. I think uh, we, we're keeping these Thursday nights open. I hope they join us. I want to thank again uh, Ken McArdle for calling in. Remember, go to BibleRhymes.com to get his uh, uh, wonderful book. And I want to thank you again for thank coming you. in. Thank you. Appreciate it. And, I, and you'll be willing to come in next week to talk about taxes in downtown Danbury? Yes, I will. All right. And I understand there's a show regarding uh, Ridgefield in the works uh, that may come about in the next month or so. Great. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it very much. For coming thank in. you.